Hey, how's it going, friends? Thank you for tuning in to VR Revelations. It is February the 2nd, the year of our Lord, 2023. And so we had a pretty uh, incredible speech today by Vladimir Putin, pretty much saying that Russia is now at war with the descendants of Hitler. Of course, we do know that there are Nazis fighting in the army of Ukraine, uh, not all of them, but certainly that is an ideology that is very uh, prevalent among a lot of these soldiers there, especially those that support uh, the leader uh, Stefan Bandera, I believe is his name. So uh, we know that uh, these German Leopard tanks are going to be showing up uh, pretty soon there on the battlefield in Ukraine, and so of course this is going to awaken the World War II memories of the Russians and uh, the colossal fight they had against Nazi Germany. So, um, the reason I'm covering this now is I actually made a video previously a couple of weeks ago talking about how Russia was pretty much declaring this a new patriotic war aimed at NATO and the United States and uh, Britain and pretty much the whole collective there that are supporting Ukraine. So, uh, you know, the first patriotic war was against Nazi Germany and it was a massive uh, battle, of course, as we all know uh, by the history books and by all the footage of World War II. And so for them to actually label this as a new patriotic war just, uh, you know, it lets us know just what their mentality is and what they're getting ready for. Now, in that previous video that I made talking about how Russia is labeling this patriotic war, we actually didn't have uh, Vladimir Putin himself uh, saying it, but there were reports that that's what they were uh, considering this conflict. But now, as we'll see in this uh, article here, or this report by War News 24-7, Vladimir Putin just gave a speech where he was actually uh, making these statements. So, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Um, so, it says here, The most serious indication that Russia is moving rapidly towards the declaration of a new great patriotic war with all that this entails, was given by Vladimir Putin on the occasion of the 80th anniversary of the Battle of Stalingrad. We are threatened again by fascism and the German leopard tanks, the Russian president characteristically said and added that those who expect to win on the battlefield obviously do not understand that a modern war with Russia will be completely different for them. Of course, that's because of the modern weapons. But we have a way to respond, and it won't just end up, uh, it won't just end with the use of armored vehicles. Everyone must understand this. Very interesting there, hinting at uh, nuclear weapons, possibly. Added Vladimir Putin in an obvious, uh, as the Moscow Times newspaper points out, reference to Russia's massive nuclear arsenal. There you have it, guys. Now, P I saw a comment on one of my videos saying, man, you're obsessed with nuclear weapons. Uh, yeah, that's kind of like the only major difference in our day and age to literally any other point in history. The fact that we actually have these weapons with the ability to destroy the whole world. Now again, from my Christian belief, as I've said in uh, my videos of the signs of the end times, I think that God allowed these weapons to be discovered to bring about the end of days as it was prophesied in the Bible which would be by fire, as opposed to the first time that God uh, destroyed the world in judgment, which was by water in the days of Noah. But anyways, I digress. Let me jump back into the article here. The Russian president first laid flowers at the eternal flame at uh, Mamayev uh, Kurgan, a hillside where much of the fighting took place, and which today houses the Battle of Stalingrad Museum Complex, and the city's famous Motherland Calls statue. Fascism and German tanks are again on our borders. They should prepare themselves for the consequences, he said and meaningfully added. Now, unfortunately, we see that the ideology of Nazism, already in its modern form and its modern manifestation, again creates direct threats to the security 
of our country. So you can see Vladimir Putin is now personally rallying the people here and positioning this war uh, as as a war once again as uh, uh, you know Germany, Germany, who of course about seventy or eighty years ago were ferociously attacking uh, Russia. Uh, of course, being led at that time by Hitler. So, it goes on here. We are once again forced to fend off the aggression of the collective West. Nazi ideology reemerges while Russia withstands Western aggression. Once again, he is threatened by German tanks. Leopard, uh, leopards with crosses are sent to fight Russia in the Ukrainian land by the last descendants of Hitler, the Banderites. So go Google uh, Stefan Bandera. Correct me if I'm wrong. I, that might not be his first name. I really haven't looked much into that man. There's this Bandera guy that's supposedly like full-blown Nazi. And, uh, you know, they actually like reverence the guy and like follow after him. And a lot of his followers are, are fighting in the uh, with the German forces. So, again, this is all ideological. These are all just ideologists, racist ideologies. Uh, there's racist people all over the world in literally every country, right? But the focus here is that there's a history here between the Germans and the Russians. And German tanks are about to enter uh, Ukraine, so you can't ignore that. Uh, those who drag Germany into a new war and expect to win on the battlefield do not understand that a modern war with Russia will be different. We're not sending our tanks to their borders, but we have something to answer for and it's not going to end with the use of armored vehicles everyone needs to understand that again a repetition there of that reference to nuclear weapons so let's actually take a look here at this speech where vladimir putin said this guys now again i reported uh, uh on this pa new patriotic war previously a couple of weeks ago but the only difference now is that vladimir putin is actually on television now speaking to the people so there is definitely uh, an escalation, escalation, a major escalation coming now, and he's rallying the people uh, behind this uh, special military uh, operation, this war effort, um, and just reminding them of what the uh, Germans did a couple of decades ago. So let's go ahead and pay attention to what he's saying down here, guys, because again, this man here uh, is pretty much leading the war effort right now. And everything he says right now is not of coincidence. It's all methodically planned. And uh, we can safely assume that there will be a, a major escalation coming now since he's talking clearly about Nazis here. So let's go ahead and listen to this. Сейчас, к сожалению, мы видим, что идеология нацизма уже в своем современном обличии, в современном проявлении вновь создает прямые угрозы безопасности нашей страны. Мы вновь, вновь и вновь вынуждены давать отпор агрессии коллективного Запада. Невероятно, невероятно, но факт. Нам снова угрожают немецкими танками «Леопард», на борту которых кресты. И вновь собираются воевать с Россией на земле Украины руками последующей Гитлера, руками бандеровцев. Мы знаем, что несмотря на усилия официальные, продажные по своей сути пропаганды недружественных нам западных элит, у нас много друзей, причем во всем мире, в том числе и на американском континенте, в Северной Америке, в Европе. Но те, те, кто втягивает европейские страны, в том числе и Германию, в новую войну с Россией, и тем более безответственно заявляет об этом как уже о свершившемся факте, те, кто рассчитывает одержать над Россией победу на поле боя, видимо, не понимают, что современная война с Россией будет для них совсем другой. Мы свои танки к их границам не посылаем. Но у нас есть чем ответить. И применением бронетехники дело не закончится. Все должны это понимать. Для тех, кто угрожает нам, видимо, для них непонятна простая истина. 
Весь наш народ, все мы росли и с молоком матери впитали в себя традиции нашего народа. Поколение победителей, преемственность поколений, ценности, традиции. Все это, все это то, что отличает Россию, делает нас сильными. So there you have it, guys. Um, of course, he made the comparison there uh, of what is going now, what is going on now with the uh, arrival of the German Leopard 2 tanks to World War II and the Nazis. Uh, what caught my interest there was that he also said that Russia has many friends around the world, even in North America. Of course, we do see uh, news reports from Fox News that are actually criticizing what the Americans are doing right now in Ukraine. So he was sort of making reference there to like Tucker Carlson and all those voices that are against this war and against NATO getting involved in Ukraine. Uh, but we do know that uh, even though the West would like us to think that Russia is isolated, that is not the truth. The truth, they have uh, many nations that are on their side that have actually spoken in support of Russia that are still doing business with Russia. One of the major ones literally being China who is an enemy of the United States. There's no secret about that. There's actually reports of a Chinese spy balloon right now flying around the skies of uh, the United States, and everybody's all in a panic about it, um, which is it's pretty laughable that, uh, you know, this Chinese spy balloon is just flying around the U.S. Uh, but anyways, uh, again, um, you know, he's making that clear that if things do escalate to such a point, you know, Russia does have its, has, has its allies. Um, also, he did make some reference there to uh, Russia's history of, of victories. Uh, as I like to mention, uh, the Russians defeated Napoleon, literally one of the greatest military strategists of all time, right up there with Alexander the Great. And whether you like it or not, Nazi Germany, the actual army, right, was one of the most lethal and powerful and organized and efficient armies the world has ever seen. And again, they may, they met their downfall just like Napoleon did when they entered and attacked uh, Russia. So again, um, you can look at this politically and ide ideologically. My uh, point here and the purpose of this channel is to show you that uh, God's word uh, supersedes all of this ideological and political debate. Uh, the Bible uses these nations to bring, or God uses these nations to bring about his prophecies. And I think we are living in the end of days. Again, I've spoken of the signs uh, that we would see in the end of days. Of course, nobody knows the day or the hour, but there are clear signs that the Bible spoke of. And the fact that uh, we live in this nuclear age where we have these instruments, these weapons to destroy the planet is one of those signs that we are in the end of days. But again, I don't think the world is going to end. We're not going to have a nuclear apocalypse over Ukraine. I think that all this is sort of the beginning of what will eventually lead up to a nuclear war. And I don't I don't think that's... Uh, you know, something strange to say. You don't have to be spiritual to see that, right? That there will be at some point a World War III, as we can see uh, all the speculation already. But I don't think it will be over Ukraine. I think it will be at a later date. But I think we're pretty close. And I think what this whole conflict is creating here is these two sides that will eventually face off. And I think the United States and its allies are going to be on uh, that new, that one side, right, that uh, new world order, and then I think we'll have Russia and, and China. But at the end of the day, according to the Bible, you know, all nations are going to launch their nuclear missiles, you know, in, the, uh, in this uh, Armageddon, right, this apocalyptic nuclear war. So it really doesn't matter who's on whose side. Um, but, you know, now getting back into the politics, uh, what I think is going to happen here is that, at first, I didn't think that Russia would use a nuclear weapon uh, in Ukraine for those reasons that I just stated, that I don't think there will be a nuclear apocalypse over Ukraine. But now I could see the possibility of, uh, you know, a smaller tactical nuke possibly being used inside of there without the, 
you know, without the thing escalating into full-blown uh, nuclear war, because I don't think the United States will be uh, willing to actually end the world over Ukraine. I think they're just trying to make the best out of this situation. But also, as I mentioned in my previous video, some military experts there in Russia have suggested uh, that testing nuclear weapons uh, would be beneficial for Russia, not only to make sure they're actually working, because uh, most uh, nuclear superpowers uh, actually test their weapons via uh, computer programs, right, uh, computer simulations, which really, uh, you know, don't, uh, it's really not 100% a hundred, a hundred sure, you can't be 100% sure by a computer that your weapons will actually work when you need them, so, uh, you know, these experts are saying that they should test these weapons just to make sure they work, and also at the same time to remind people of what a nuclear explosion looks like, and to sort of warn the West and all these nations that continue to supply Ukraine with weapons that this is what is at stake. Again, many viewers and many people analyzing this and even the West itself, it's like this is like the big giant elephant in the room that Russia keeps talking about. But everybody wants to pretend like they don't exist, like that's not part of the equation. But Putin and Russia literally keep, keep mentioning it every time. Guys, we're not living back in the days where it was just guns and, uh, you know, projectiles at high speeds, tanks and swords and arrows and whatnot. We have nuclear weapons and we're talking about human beings' lives here, right? And at some point, uh, you know, you're going to want to use those weapons to save lives. That's, that was literally the excuse for the Americans dropping two nuclear bombs on Nagasaki and Hiroshima in order to prevent further loss of life, right? They dropped these bombs, which the Japanese thought it was like an act of God. But anyways, go watch that video uh, where I covered uh, that analysis by uh, this military analyst there in Russia. So I do think that before a nuclear bomb were to be used in Ukraine, uh, I think that we uh, it's more likely that we'll see a test I think that it'll be recorded and shown on national television. Of course, it'll go viral. And then I think even the average person on the streets that really doesn't want to take a look at what's going on will be awakened to the realities of our day and age, of this nuclear age, of this advanced technological civilization in which we live in. And so uh, I think eventually the U.S. and NATO will back down. But again... Um, later on, I do think there uh, will be a nuclear war. I think it's inevitable, um, again, because I believe in the scriptures. But that's just the spiritual side of it. Uh, but anyways, there you have it, guys. What's interesting here is that Putin has made this speech. This is a strong message here, and I am definitely expecting uh, an escalation here uh, for sure. Let me just read a little bit more here before ending the video. Um, again, you can go check out this article on War News 24-7. This is a Greek website. It says, We will destroy Western weapons. Earlier, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov warned that the greater the range of Western weapons in Ukraine, the more Moscow will, re will repel this threat from its territory. So, uh, Ukraine has asked for longer-range missiles. It looks like the United States is going to send them some longer-range missiles. So the Russians are saying that they're just going to become more aggressive in their push uh, on the front lines in order to push the Ukrainians further, take more territory. That way they'll have less capability to, to strike inside of what is now legally Russian territory. So what they're saying is, hey, the more weapons you send them, the more we cl we will continue to advance into Ukraine. Um, so it says, now we aim to defeat the Ukrainian artillery so that it does not pose a threat to our territories. And the greater the range of weapons provided to the Kiev regime, the more we will have to remove them from the territories that are part of our country. Uh so, yeah, there you go, guys. It, it looks like things are escalating. I think that, again, this is very important, the speech Putin, uh, Putin gave, because as we've been analyzing and rumoring, uh, there is apparently going to be a major offensive pretty soon. And so I think this pretty much gave it the green light, right? It's telling the Russian people, hey, look, the Germans, 
The German tanks are here. These are the descendants of Nazis. There are Nazis in Ukraine. They're trying to destroy Russia. They hate the Russians. And so we need to do everything that we can. And if the West continues to send more weapons, then, you know, we're not going to win this war by tanks. Again, Putin keeps making reference to these nuclear weapons. And people just kind of blindly just want to ignore that, uh, you know, the destruction, the end of the world is coming. That's that's just, that's exactly what happened in the days of Noah. If If we get back to the Bible, people ignored Noah's warning that judgment was coming unto the world. And, you know, people refused to believe him. They laughed at him. They mocked him until the waters and the floods came and God shut the ark, and people were literally knocking on Noah uh, on the boat, on the ark, so that Noah could let them in. But God is the one that closed the door to, to the ark. So it's going to be the same. Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be in the days of the end times. And, you know, people are, are, are going to, they don't want to face the reality that there will be an end to this world that we now have the capability and the instruments to bring about those prophecies. But again, God is merciful. The Bible tells us he waits because he doesn't want people to perish. So he wants people to repent and to be liberated by the truth that we might not fear these things. We all know we all have to die someday. A lot of people are dying right now. They're not even going to see this develop any further. Um... So we are mortal, but again, the, the message of the Bible is a message of hope, a message of immortality, of eternal life, right? Of deliverance from death. Because when we die, it's not over. It's not just blackness. There is a heaven and there is a hell. These are spiritual dimensions. There is a day of judgment in the future, and there is a new heavens and a new earth in the future. That's just the Bible message, guys. That's what I believe. And so, again, everything that is happening here also has that spiritual connotation to it. So just, you know, try to take a step back and don't get so caught up in the political and in the ideological battles. Uh, but, you know, try and uh, be spiritual about it also. And remember, the truth is stranger than fiction. Anyways, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Uh, leave me your comments and thoughts down below. Um, and uh, make sure you give the video a like and make sure you subscribe for future content. Anyways, thank you for tuning in. Have a wonderful day and God bless.